Hi, my name is Mark. Welcome back to the shop. And uh, in this uh, period of um, not doing any ER5 videos and what have you, I have actually been doing things in the background. And uh, the head bearing kit is one of the things I've been doing. But apart from that, what I've been doing is this. Now, this is what I call the Easy Engine. And for a long time, I've been wanting to do a series on how engines work and uh, how the components interact and blah 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 and I always wanted to do um, the progression of the design so start off with a very basic engine and then teach you why things have been changed over time and improvements that have been made so I was thinking about the best way to do this and to try and get across how easy or how easy it is to make a very simple engine so what I've got here is a design for a very, very simple um, two-stroke engine. And if we just take a quick look inside, you can see how simple it is. We have a crankshaft, conrod, piston, piston, a sleeve, a outer cylinder here, a head or a cap, crank case in here, highlighted in blue and then a very simple carb and what I'm going to do or what I'm in the middle of doing actually is actually building this so this video is going to be a basically it's a pictorial video unfortunately I've had to do this in my nights and stuff spare time that I have at work unfortunately I'm not allowed it's uh, contracted where I'm not allowed to really take images videos mainly i uh, got away with taking photographs and what have you um with permission just as long as i don't picture the rest of the stuff we're doing at work so like i said unfortunately this is going to be not a video video it is going to be a lot of stills but i'm going to do a commentary of how i'm putting this engine together and then when i've finished it i'll do some proper videos back at the work in the workshop so i can show you putting this engine together and showing you how simple it is and the minimal components that you need we're then going to run this engine and then I'm going to hook this engine up to a, um, a little dyno generator so we can run the engine rev it up and we can see what kind of power um, it's generating now it won't be calibrated um, testing of the power it will be basically what voltage and what current do we or can we create with a generator using this engine and then what we're going to do is after that is i'm going to kind of open it up to um, the comments and what have you of people coming up with ideas of how we can make this better and we are going to implement them i can change this engine as much as i want so if we've you know if um, a suggestion is to change the piston design and change this that and the other and yeah you'll get the idea we'll be able to um, make changes to this engine make it better hopefully test that to see if we've actually made an improvement by putting a load on the engine and then eventually I've designed this in such a way that I can use most of the components from this engine and turn it into a four stroke and do exactly the same thing so you'll get a visual um, a visual aid it's a teaching aid in a sense of an actual running engine and how by using very very minimal parts how you can make a running engine and then how we can go about improving that so i just think it's an easier way of doing that than me just writing on the whiteboard saying this is a piston this is a rod and try and visualize how it works where i can actually show you how it works the reason why i'm doing it this way is because one we have full control over how or i have full control of how this engine works the second thing is is that I can make components just to fit this and the third thing is is if I show you an engine just say out of a two stroke nowadays um, or even a lawnmower or, or something like that is they're either really badly made like in the respect of lawnmowers they're made in the cheapest way possible just to get them running and if you take a motorbike two stroke engine it has actually had all the improvements that have been devised over the years added to it already and it's very hard to take them away i can just point them out where i can with this make improvements and we can also backtrack and use the old components if things don't work out so that's what this is and uh, i'll hope you enjoy 
Right then, so this is part one, this is making the cylinder and uh, there's the cast iron stock that I have, I'm using cast iron for this sleeve and one of the first things I do is basically set it up between centres so that I can turn down the exterior. I'm using the tiny little shitty Colchester lathe that we have at work, it's horrible but it's the only machine that was really available at the time that I can piss around on because no one uses it because it's bloody useless. Any anyway, road, so you can see me turning up to a uh, shoulder there. This is so we have I have a flange surface um, for me to be able to locate the cylinder at uh, the sleeve in the cylinder once I've made the cylinder. And you can see me drilling it out and then boring it out. And I'm just doing it undersized so I can bore it later on once I fit it inside the aluminium cylinder, and then I can hone it just before we are ready for fitting pist the actual piston itself so we can hone the two together. You can see there for size comparison I've just got like a 20 pence piece so to give you an idea of how big it is it has a 30 millimeter bore and I can't I think it's 55 millimeters long. Um, I also lobbed off the other bit of uh, cast iron so we can make a piston ring out of it. 